question for Church A. From His Holiness Pope Shenouda's book, um, Have You Seen the One Whom I Love? What does the following verse depict? Support your answer biblically. Tell me, O whom I love, where you feed your flock, where you make it rest at noon. Support your answer biblically. Part B, give two examples of people who are a depiction of the verse above. Support your answer with biblical verses slash church father sayings. Church B, from have you seen the one I love? One of the words, your name is ointment poured forth in Song of Songs 1-2, recited by the priest. Please recite that exact phrase said by the priest. Explain the correlation between the ointment and the name of the Lord. Give two examples relating to this with supporting biblical verses, if applicable. In the, the verse, tell me of whom I love, where you feed your flock, where you make it rest at noon, we encounter the human soul in its search for God, his ways, and, and his ways, and wondering where he is. This human soul, um, these words depict a soul that, is, that loves the Lord, looks for him, searches for him, and saves no effort to find him. This is a reminiscent of King David, um, and David the prophet and the king. Uh, Show me your ways, O Lord, teach me your path. Psalm 24, 5. 25-4, sorry. And, um, and also, um, the verse, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. In Psalm 27, verse 8. And um, examples of people who have lived, lived this verse is, as I mentioned, King David, who was um, a great example of someone who looked for the Lord everywhere and searched for him. Also, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the wife of Cleopas, who uh, whenever they heard that someone was going to Jesus' grave, they would always follow him and go with him. And St. Augustine, who had no relationship with God whatsoever, but deployed all means possible to find him. He used logic and he used philosophy and he used all possible means to find him. And at the end, he found God within himself and declared, uh, you were with me, but because of the abundance of my resistance, I was not with you. In Confessions 10.38. Uh, other examples of people who have followed God um, uh, is St. John the Beloved who followed God into exile. If exile was the place where he would find God, then it would be the most beautiful, beautiful place on earth. There, that's why he sees there the throne of God. The exact phrase that is said by the priest is in the offering of incense, and it is, <clears throat> your holy name is a sweet-scented ointment poured out for us. Incense is offered to your holy name as a pure offering. Explain the correlation between the ointment and name of the Lord. Um, the name of the Lord is sweet and attractive. In the Holy Psalmody, we say your holy name, we say your name is sweet and blessed in the mouths of your saints. Also, it rejoices the mouths that utter it. In Psalm 145, King David, verses 1 and 2, King David says, I will extol you, my God and my King. I will bless your holy name forever and ever. I will I will bless you and I will praise your name forever and ever. The next point is that it's reminiscent of the alabaster flask that the woman poured on the feet of Jesus. And just like it was a, that was a sweet ointment and fragrance that filled the whole house, so is the Lord also an ointment that spreads and that fills everywhere. Um, an example of this is with St. Justina and St. Cabrianos when the Lord's name in her, because it spreads to the saints and is and makes the saint's name sweet in the sight of the Lord was enough to cast out the devils. Next is that the Lord's name is a strong tower. In Proverbs 18.10, uh, not eight, one eighteen, but 18.10, it says that the Lord is a name, the Lord's name is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. And um, that means that the Lord's name is a castle, a fortified castle and therefore we should call upon him in tribulations and hardships. And an example of this is King David. In 1 Samuel 17, 45, he said, you come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Another example is that uh, we use the name of the Lord in, um, in the sacraments, like in Matthew 28, 19, he says, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Another example is that in everything we do and begin, we use the name of the Lord and um, 
therefore we secure his blessings and when we keep his name always in front of us, then we always remember him like Elijah in 1 Kings 17.1. He says, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand. Church A from uh, the Bible characters in Genesis book. Uh, question says, as mentioned in the book, what conclusions can we reach from analyzing the, offer of, the offering of Melchizedek? Support with quotes from the early church fathers. Bible characters in Genesis as mentioned in the book mention examples from the life of Abraham that proves that he had obedience by faith, support with biblical with a biblical verse or verses. Melchizedek, the offering that Melchizedek gave up was bread and wine. And Cyprian, the bishop of Carthage in the third century, uh, said that the offering of Melchizedek prefigures the offering of Christ and that it was also bread and wine. Um, Ab Abraham also gave the tithe to Melchizedek, which also uh, is similar to the commandment that uh, Jesus gave us, saying that we must give 10% of uh, not only our money, but we must also give the tithe. Um, St. Ambrose of Milan also says that Melchizedek was the father of the sacraments. And back to uh, uh, Bishop Cyprian, uh, he also said that through the offering that prefigured Christ, he also said, it is evident that Melchizedek also symbolizes Christ and that um, they gave up, uh, he gave the same offering, which was the bread and wine. He was the king of Salem, which means peace. And his name, Melchizedek, means uh, king of righteousness, which are all, uh, which all point to Christ as they are all uh, characteristics of Christ or names for Christ. Abraham took his wife, Sarah, and their father, Terah, that they both have the same father, and um, Abraham's nephew, Lot. And along their way, they would build altars and to show that they were people of God also. Um, they they eventually landed in a town called Haran um, in, in Syria. And um, the Lord waited until um, Sarah and Abraham's father, Terah, um, grew old and died. And after that, the Lord came to Abraham for a second time and told him to leave without not knowing where to go, without knowing where to go. And this time they ended up in Canaan and um, Abraham showed another example of faith, uh, obedience by faith there when um, uh, since Sarah was barren, she wasn't able to have children. Therefore, the law stated that she had to give one of her slaves to Abraham as a wife because the law was that um, the purpose of marriage was to have uh, offspring. In various ways, describe and explain one piece of biblical evidence with verses and one piece of historical evidence that speak to the validity of this church honor. Do we worship St. Mary? How is venerating her as the mother of Christ justified? Why did Peter Gilchrist observe what did Peter Gilquist observe is perhaps a result of the present generation's attitude towards St. Mary. Explain his position and support with a verse if possible. Church A from Becoming Orthodox. The Orthodox Church calls St. Mary, a question of three parts. The Orthodox Church calls St. Mary Mother of God. While this name may be touchy for some, describe one biblical incident that is evidence to this title and support with verses. What heretic caused the title to be brought to great importance in the fourth century? Explain his heresy and how did the other Orthodox Christians react to it? Why is the title important for our lives? Does this mean St. Mary, part C, does this mean St. Mary is the mother of the Trinity? What is the specific Greek word that describes this title, the title of St. Mary? So the Orthodox Church honors St. Mary in various ways 
because she is the mother of God. She was the most pure, and she, she accepted our Lord Jesus into her, and she is often said, to, and she is said to be considered the first of the redeemed. And there is an ancient hymn in the Orthodox faith that says, O Theotokos, it is truly right to, bless, to call you blessed. And later on in the hymn, it refers to St. Mary as the most blessed and ever pure. Do we worship St. Mary? No, we do not worship St. Mary. We simply honor St. Mary, for worship is reserved for the Holy Trinity. And how is venerating, Saint Ma venerating her as the mother of Christ justified? Venerating, venerating St. Mary as the mother of Christ is justified because, as it says in Revelations chapter 1, John calls us all to judge angels. Therefore, and we can call her our queen and because she is higher than us and she is the mother of God. Therefore, honoring her and venerating her is, mere, is appropriate because we can honor the saints and we can pray to the saints through in, for their intercessions and we can do the same through St. Mary. What did Peter Gilquest observe is perhaps a result of the present generation's attitude towards St. Mary. He observed that attitudes towards St. Mary, it's a lot of people sometimes doubt her virginity as it says, as some people bring up the concept of the brothers and sisters of Christ as, and we know that this isn't true because in the book of Genesis, we see that Abraham is referred to as Lot's brother, but we know that this isn't true because Abraham is Lot's uncle. One biblical incident that occurred um, that supports the title is when Mary went to visit her cousin, um, when, went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth, as cited in Luke 138, uh, declared, why is it granted to me that the mother of my God should come to me? Um, and Elizabeth had known from when she was a young girl that the Lord would be coming. As cited in Deuteronomy 6.4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is here, the Lord is one. Um, part B, what heretic caused the title to be brought to great, uh, to great importance in the fourth century? Explain his heresy and how did other Orthodox Christians react to it? Why is this title important for our lives? Uh, the heretic that brought great importance to this was former presbyter Nestorius. Uh, Nestorius, in, in essence, claimed that um, when Christ was in the womb, he was fully human, and when he was born, he assumed divinity. Um, uh, the Orthodox Christians all reacted in one word, screaming, wrong. Um, this title is important to our lives because um, if Christ had not been fully human and fully divine in the womb from, from the time he had been conceived in the womb, I'm sorry, from the time he had been conceived in the womb, um, then we would have still been dead in our sin, for it was necessary that Christ be fully divine and fully human all at once to assume our sin and conquer over the devil. Um, does this mean that St. Mary is the mother of the Trinity? What specific Greek word that describes this title of St. Mary? No, this does not mean that Mary is the mother of the Trinity. The Trinity has no mother. The specific Greek word that uh, describes Mary is Theotokos, which uh, in translation means uh, God-bearer. She only bore the Son of God, and thus we honor her and bless her name. A, St. Mary, East Brunswick, 75. Church B, St. Mary, and Archangel Michael, Connecticut, 58.